Hi folks, some really awesome new features in Fusion 360 that have come out over the past few months. Number one, by far the best and most used for us, simulation now has a remaining stock mode. The default colorization setting is operation. So when you're done, the different colors represent different cam operations. Switch that mode to comparison. And now subject to your tolerance, the default is 7,007 inch. Green means you machined it within that tolerance relative to your solid model. Now make sure to turn off or toggle off the light bulb for your model so that you can truly see where there's blue remaining stock or red, which means you've either gouged or removed too much material. If I change this tolerance down to say 2,007 inch, you'll see some red. Now the red on those inside flanges was intentional. I had negative stock to leave to have uh, these parts fit. These are actually some of the parts we did for the Project Egress card to that video here. But the blue is remnants from my surfacing tool pass. Again, here I'm okay with that, but this is a great way to catch those cam mistakes. Where did I forget to remove material? What have I not finished? Another one of the Project Egress parts was a pretty complicated positional five axis part where there were just so many cam operations that it was really hard to tell what I finished machining and what was left to do. Again, comparison is your friend. I can see I've got some corner picks to do or material to clean out and some nooks and crannies. Second best thing under drilling hole recognition. If you don't see it there, there's a new thing called extensions, which you can click on to get access to that feature. It's kind of like templates. If you've seen, we're big fans of saving different templates for different machines and different materials, but this is even better because it's talking to both the CAD side of Fusion and it's smart enough to look at your existing tool library. So on a part like this, it's actually a lathe sample under cam samples. If I wanted to machine this on a live tool lathe or a fourth axis or fifth axis right now, I would have to click each one of these holes and set the tool orientation, or I could create a pattern, which absolutely would work, but this is gonna be better. Drilling, hole recognition, and the reason it only finds one hole is that by default, it only looks for holes that are aligned with our Z axis, but if we head into options, if I uncheck hide holes not aligned with this setup, it will give me every hole in this part. And what's amazing is it's recognizing each hole in this part, and it's proposing a solution of what to do. And there's a lot of customizations that you can do to this. It's actually looking at your tool library to find an acceptable tool. It's assuming that this hole needs spot drilled, then drilled. You can adjust that as you see fit for an override. And if you click OK, it's going to create all of the cam for those, the spot, the drill, the tool orientation for each one. So it's gonna make camming up complicated parts a lot easier. Uh, or think of a five axis part where say you have 300 holes and each one is on sl a slightly different plane. This will take care of all of that for you. It's also intelligent. So if we go back to design, create, thread, and let's say I turn this into a quarter 20 thread. Click OK. Drilling, hole recognition. It recognizes that that hole is a quarter 20 tap. It's automatically going to pull in the correct spot, the correct drill, and the correct tap from the tool libraries that I have listed as acceptable to use here. So your programming is done. Also in the new extensions options are some really cool probing features. The idea is you're going to be able to turn your CNC machine into a CMM or a type of inspection machine. Under probing, inspect surfaces, pick a piece of geometry. And let's see, we need to flip that orientation. There we go. So we can say, I want you to measure that point subject to an upper and lower tolerance and tell me if it passes or not. This is gonna make it super easy to use your Renishaw to check bore diameters, to check feature diameters in the machine. So you can come back and do additional machining if you need to, or just add to overall process reliability, whether you're doing this at the machine or whether you're running unattended. Any metrology guru will quickly slap you on the wrists and tell you that you cannot measure a part on the same machine that it was made on. And there is absolutely truth to that. Machines do wear down. They do have error in everything from linear rails to ball screws to gibbs and measuring with the same machine it was machined on is a feedback loop that will not give you true metrology level accuracy however there's still a lot to be gained and a lot of relative accuracy or checks that can be done here on tool pass cam settings tool deflections and easily checking and making better parts
We now have section analysis in CAM. Really excited for it. This is another part we made for Project Egress. If we do construct midplane, we can con construct a plane right in the middle of our part. Click OK. And then when we're in the manufacturing workspace, go to inspect section analysis, expand our model tree, construction, pick that plane. It now sections out that part. We turn our analysis light bulb on and off to toggle that mode. And on this part, it's really helpful because we used a 3D contour along with a Harvey lollipop end mill. And having a section analysis turned on lets us look at that toolpath the way you really want to look at it, which is to understand how is it contacting those walls, how is it moving down through the part. The undercut on this part was for a universal joint that we 3D printed on the Mark Forge. Worked great. On more complicated parts like this guy, section analysis can be really helpful. Analysis, I'll just pick a face. I can drag that face back to expose that pocket. And now when I'm doing, say, a 2D contour or a boring operation or some sort of detail and cleanup, I can get a really good clean view of an internal feature that otherwise is really difficult to see. Previously, I would use Control 7 to switch into a different mode like wireframe to try to get a better view of what was happening with that toolpath. But that view often was still complicated and noisy and no substitute for a good section analysis. Next up, you can now choose to see the toolpath points without going into simulation. So this is a good example on this scallop toolpath. If I click on simulate, I can choose show points and we now see each individual toolpath point where it's really helpful to see the points at all time is I can duplicate this and I'll edit my second scallop and I'll change my tolerance. Let's say I tighten that up and I'll add some smoothing on here of one thou. And I can now compare the point distribution of those two tool paths much more quickly without having to hop into simulation. Speaking of all of the preferences that you might have in your cam settings and in operations and tolerances and so forth, you can now back those up or even share them. So the infamous right click make default, reset default, etc. You can now control that by going to manage, export or import your cam defaults. You now have much better control over the order of drilling operations, which I absolutely love. In this example for our fixture plate, we program a tap where we just select one hole and then we use the select same diameter. The prior default used to be optimized order. Now, maybe this was optimized to a computer, but it never looked optimized to me. But in the real world, things happen. Tools break. You may need to hit stop, pause, or reset. And by controlling the order of this toolpath, it's a much more logical flow. In this case, we're able to go up one row, back down the other. Happens to also be, in my opinion, very optimized for what we're trying to do. But most importantly, if I decide halfway through this, I want to change the tap, I can now much more easily go manually reselect or use a sketch containment boundary to pick the remaining holes in that operation. And if you're wondering why we break this tap section down into multiple sections, it's because our taps do have a finite life and the way our Haas automatic tool management works is it doesn't trip the alarm for a tool having exceeded the number of holes until the cam operation is finished. So let's say your tap could only do 2,000 holes. Well, if it had done 1,990 holes and only had 10 left, and you started this plate, it's going to do all the holes you told it to, and then when it's done, it's going to check and say, oh, by the way, the tool is now expired or run out of its useful life. Two last noteworthy additions. 3D, steep and shallow. I've heard really good things about this, but it's really exciting for two reasons. Number one is that steep and shallow is effectively a form of combining two different tool paths. One that's designed for really gentle surfaces and the other that's designed for really steep walls. So you now have the ability to use one operation to control all the settings and parameters on a part that may have varying types of geometry. And it's one step closer to kind of that perfect or ultimate tool path. The other reason that it's more exciting is it represents, I believe one of the first times that Autodesk has brought in a tool path from some of the other software made by other companies that they've acquired over the time. And many of those cam packages that Autodesk now owns are incredibly powerful, top notch, very high end cam systems with some amazing tool paths. So seeing those start to trickle into Fusion 3 360 is awesome. For those of you that are looking to learn more about Fusion 360 or CNC machining, we offer hands-on classes here in Zanesville, Ohio, and we're also excited to announce that we have released our first online class, a Fusion 360 comprehensive 
CAD course. Click here for more information and to sign up. As always, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.